all righty recording so hi you guys and welcome to my channel i'm back with a new video hope that all of you are do doing good today jeez it's 2 a.m so allow me to not be able to speak properly we're gonna check out a video called this is what happens if you trash talk steph curry and then we have this is this um his name is kevin what is he saying you think we're gonna see what they're talking about in this video so i'm not gonna ramble let's get straight into the video Ooh. all right let's see i know you can tell by the body language curry is about to hit up the ring. Though Steph Curry is known to do over-the-top celebrations after making ridiculous baskets, he's widely considered as nice a guy overall with his carefree demeanor and childlike enthusiasm whenever he's on the court. But on some occasions... A good push. Curry with the back up. Jalen Brown drills it! I know that it's pretty rare to see Steph get angry or triggered, but there are some players who just want to play with fire and, for whatever reason, decide to poke the bear. Well, today, let's see what happens Kevin to the players Porter. when they trash talk the two-time MVP. This right. first incident happened back in the 2019 Western Semis matchup between the Dubs and the Rockets. The Dubs were just one way away from closing out the Rockets, and at a game six, they had a chance to advance by beating the Rockets on their home floor. As a true and dedicated professional, Steph asked one of the Dubs managers, Eric Housen, to book the court from 7 to 8 p.m. so he could practice and fire some shots before tip-off. However, for some reason, Chris Paul got wind of the news and decided to spoil Curry's plan by arriving at the Toyota Center before Steph did. When no. Steph arrived, he saw CP3 already jacking up shots, and when he offered to split the court so they could both practice, CP3 denied Steph's request really? and kicked no. him off the court. There's no denying that CP3 was playing mind games with Steph here, and CP3 actually did a smart thing, or so he thought. He actually had no idea that this action that he just pulled off would later bite him in the rear end. Come game time, CP3's little devious game plan proved to be working as Curry was scoreless in the first half and his shooting slump from the previous games seemed to have rubbed off in game six as well. Yeah. The Rockets thought they had this one in the bag, but that's when Curry woke up from his deep sleep. At the start of the third, Steph slowly revved up by making some tough loaders and layups, and a few moments later, he finally got his groove on from three with this corner basket. And by the fourth quarter, Steph just simply took over. Curry long distance, that's a three. Curry long distance. Aye, aye, aye. Curry launches a three. Punch it in again. Here's a full breakdown of what he did. From being scoreless in the first half, Steph ended the game by scoring 33 points, shooting 9 of 20 from the field, 4 of 11 from 3, along with 11 free throws, and out of the 33 points that he mustered, 21 of those came in the fourth, including 16 points in the final 5 minutes. As Steph headed wow. back to the locker room after the game, he let out his most. frustrations by saying, Damn, that was savage. <laughs> Alright guys, off to our next story. Since we're talking about players who experience the wrath of Steph after they talk smack, this video wouldn't be complete without the presence of Patrick Beverly. Mm. During one of their season matchups in 2018, the two point guards got tangled up early in the second quarter, which resulted in both of them getting teed up. Patrick Beverly, <laughs> he gets in people's heads. <laughs> See, before this happened, Steph was just chilling with four points. I don't know what Bev was thinking, but this incident lit a fire inside Steph, and he transformed into a human oh torch my. instantly after that. Nine rebounds on the game. 116, 115. Ooh. Ooh. And Steph saw it. Steph turned around three, and he got it! And finally, when the game was on the line, Steph finished them off with this layup. Look how far they pushed it out. Curry, down the lane for the lead! Well, apparently Pat Bev learned his lesson after that, and in a podcast, he talked about players which no one should ever talk smack to, and one of them is Steph. I ain't gonna come at nobody, and I know he's a hitter. I ain't gonna go out there and talk trash to Steph Curry. Mm -hmm. Steph Curry gets 30 shots a game. Some people you pick your battles with. Steph Curry sees me not talking, and then he's like, oh, what's up with Pat? Oh, then I know he's locked in. Anyway, moving on here. Steph also got entangled with another player just like what happened in the case of Pat Bev. 
But this time around, the man that he got caught up with was actually not part of the game. During game two of the 2018 finals, Steph took the last shot of the third, but as he was going back to the Dubs bench, Steph Curry and Kendrick Perkins talking to each other. Big Perk was on the sidelines dressed in a fancy suit when all this happened, and according to Steph, Perkins tried to trip him up as he went back to the bench. Mm. Now, uh, to Perk's defense, he said that he didn't do anything and his leg was just stuck out there in the same manner all throughout the game. I go to extreme measures to try to win, but I would never try to take anyone out. Well, regardless if it was intentional or not, I mean, Steph usually, was I mean, like, out, but someone walks by you, like, take it began, in. And Steph just unhinged himself and dropped bomb after bomb on the Cavs. Rebounding, extra possession. Well, there was no reason. Curry back in the corner. Nice I mean, he got his legs, you know, up now. Curry's going to have to put it up, launches it up, shot clock. <laughs> Curry finds green. Back to Curry, three-pointer, puts it in. State. Curry way outside. After the incident with Perk, Curry put on a show by hitting 5 of 5 from 3 to score 16 in the 4th and mm. finished with 33 points in total. Aside from that, he also set a finals record for most 3-pointers made in an NBA Finals game with 9. Now, most of the time we see Steph getting triggered because of the trash talk with his fellow NBA players, but there are moments where other external factors get involved, um, just exactly like what happened here. Drop it to Curry, and he is just crushed out of bounds, and now he's going to get it. Well, the refs seem to not be a huge fan of Steph because just a few possessions later. And Steph three, but you get up an offense. I'm telling it. <laughs> yeah, so if there's one person that the Clippers should blame here, then it has to be the ref. Mm. Because right after that took place, Curry just went nuts and destroyed the Clippers in almost every possible way imaginable. Caught up to them. Curry, D3. In the first quarter, picked up his third early in the second. Curry. Hey. It is just remarkable. A lot of different categories. Steph went full on berserk mode by scoring Sheesh. 11 points in the fourth to finish with 33 Ooh. on the night. He also had six steals to go along with five boards and six assists. Right after the game, Steph reflected on the incident with the refs, and here's what he had to say. It was just an accumulation of all types of weird stuff. All that led into where I thought I got a foul. It definitely fired me and the team up. After that, it was time to direct my energy into putting the ball in the basket. Why wasn't the three counter, well, though? since we've been featuring the Clippers a lot in this he video, why don't we talk or... about the incident where a certain Clippers player talked trash to the chef. But like every other time, it actually backfired big time. It was a close game in the fourth, and Paul George suggested something to Steph to make things more fun. Make it interesting. We did one. I give you one, you give me one. I'm from the logo with it. So PG wanted to challenge Steph here by having some sort of shooting duel. On the other hand, Curry didn't say anything, but instead he responded with this. And just a couple seconds later. Ahead it goes to Lee. Back to step for the lead. Curry answered PG's challenge by hitting back to back cold blooded threes at crunch time to send off the Clippers back to LA. Ouch. Now, this last story I'm about to share with you happened back in 2016. During the post game interview of Game 5 of the Western Conference Finals, a reporter asked KD and Russ if they think that Steph is an underrated defender. Apparently, Westbrook was having none of it, and here's how he reacted. I mean, uh, getting steals, uh, I don't know if that's just... I don't know why Russ laughed the way he did, but I'm like 99% sure Steph heard about what happened during the press conference because in the following game... Curry from deep. Yes. It's a close one in the fourth. Yes. Steph responded with fire and fury at the most crucial moments of the game. Steph took over with five minutes to go while the Thunder was still up by seven and ended with 31 points, 10 rebounds, nine How are they assists, connecting the dots here? Like, after at the end of the Steph game, that that has something to do with that. After an underrated defender, Steph actually proved him wrong by doing this at the end of the game to seal the deal for the dubs. Oh, Curry on the Ooh! Uh, hey! 
When it's all said and done, players around the league should be warned that messing with Steph Curry is one heck of a bad idea. Mm. Being a former player that had many battles with Steph, JJ Reddick shared in his podcast a list of players that you should avoid trash talking. And on top of that list is none other than the chef himself. Number one for me is Steph Curry. Like all great players, they have to manufacture slights and injustices to get themselves going. And this is what makes them great. Steph Curry checks his Twitter account at halftime to look for comments to get him going. No Why would you way! Talk trash to him? <laughs> he is a ticking time bomb ready to explode. I see some people time. doing that. Anyway, but... Steph Curry is almost 34 years old now, but he is still making young athletic defenders in the league look absolutely silly. So, how is the man doing it? Well, I got the video for you right here. It's a must watch video, guys, <laughs> and I normally would charge a pay per view for it, but for you, it's free. Uh, shout out to Hoop Reports. But, uh, I mean, some some things here. I mean, in general, like, they be stretching it out a little bit. Like, oh, this reason and this interview, he said this, and now in the next game. Or, like, in that game, in the third, fourth quarter, he did this. And that was because he said that, like, I, I don't know. Maybe it has something to do with it. Or maybe not. He just is great when it matters the most. When, you know, time is running out. And you just getting the extra. I don't know what it is. I'm not stuck for this. But, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed. I had to go to sleep. It's, like, it's about to be three. Like, comment, subscribe if you enjoyed, and hopefully I'll see you guys in the next video. Appreciate you watching. Bye.